I don't know if I agree with that. Because if the fights were big, like, I guarantee this is going to happen. I don't know, probably sometime this year. There will be a fight that they're going to announce through the ESPN contract where the executives at ESPN are going to go, maybe we should put this on ABC prime time. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. ESPN. Yes. Can do that. And, and let me tell you, That's they got pretty lucky. strong. Lee, they got lucky. Bob Aram gifted him. Oh, no, he, they gave, he gave away the farm for the exactly. contract. Exactly. The fucking moron in HBO acting like he doesn't, he, <laughs> no, he knows HBO what he's doing didn't, over there. Here's, here's, here's what's going on. HBO really ratings. felt, for those of you wondering, HBO felt that they didn't need top rank or top ranks fights. Yeah, because they're putting on those extraordinary Lucas Matisse cards. Yeah, that you guys yeah. all watched yeah, him last going, night. Oh, Mercito Yesta is is yeah, he's right there, fifty fifty with Jorge Linares. Hey, but guess what, people? Linares can also fight Lamanchenko. Wow, what the fuck? So can Mercito Yesta fight Lamanchenko? Is that what he's saying now too? Yeah, it, like it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. He gave away ratings right now. Seven of the top ten of 2017 are on ESPN, the network that Peter Nelson let go. The the stable, excuse me, the stable Peter Nelson let go. I agree. Should be fired. He should be fired. Sorry. And speaking of numbers, the Spence Peterson fight peaked at 695,000 views, averaged about 637 views. More than twice as many viewers watched Errol Spence most recent fight than uh, his previous appearance on the network. It's good news. It's almost up to a million. Spence is on the rise. He's on the rise. A um, little sad that he's not closer to a million already, Lee, but he had a big win in Kell Brook. Um, I thought that would have got him over the hump. H Showtime's a smaller market, uh, so we, we'll see how it goes. But, yeah, 698. Lamont Peterson, a nobody, right, to the, to the average it's, fan. Yeah. Well, and I'm not sure how many people thought that Lamont Peterson wasn't Adrian Peterson. <laughs> Stop it. I don't want to be shitty about you fight fans, but I'm telling you the beard threw everybody Not else. the ones that listen to this show. Not your friends. That's what Lee's talking about. Your guys that don't listen. Mm-hmm. Everyone who listens to this show is diehard, Lee. Mm-hmm. Diehard. Well, the people who listen to this show apparently think that I have, you know, white guilt too. <laughs> Whatever. Errol Spence. Carlos Ocampo could be next on June 16. On Wednesday, Showtime announced that Errol Spence will make his second title defense. They are tossing a lot of they are tossing around a bunch of names. The name they are tossing around the most, Ocampo. Ocampo was in action twice in 2017 including a stoppage victory uh, in Mexico. All of his fights have taken place in Mexico and Spence would be a huge step up. The IBF just ordered me to fight Ocampo. The order, uh, they ordered the mandatory, uh, mandatory two days after my fight with Peterson. So maybe I got to fight him. It could be my mandatory. He's 23-0, and 0, a guy from Mexico, said Spence. Yan, yan, yan. Well, you know what's what's funny about this is remember back in the day, a twenty three and zero Mexican out of Mexico used to be a, a step up in competition. Um, I don't know when when their prospects lost their you know what is it what is it leader the potential. I mean, right? Every Mexican fighter that was undefeated out of Mexico it had potential because that's a hard place to fight. It's hard to stay undefeated over there. Um, sometimes it's because of politics. Other times it's because the age of the fighter that he gets into the pro rankings, that he starts his pro career. So the kid's undefeated. He's a power puncher. He's Mexican. I'm in. I am in. Let's let's do this fight. Early, you know, it's better than Lamont Peterson. I'm well, telling you that right now. Anything's better than Lamont Peterson. I don't. Matter of fact, if I was Ocampo's people, I might be trying to get that fight first. Hmm. There you go. Manny Pacquiao return is set, question mark. Mike Alvarado rumored as foe, question mark, by none other than Steve More More Kim. So is Manny Pacquiao returning to the ring solidified for spring? I don't want to say what I should say, said Pacquiao's promoter Bob Arum, who was careful in choosing his words. But we have no disagreement with the deal with Pacquiao. And what we hope to do is have everything finalized this weekend. <laughs> meaning this weekend. 
Pacquiao has not fought since losing his WBO welterweight title against Jeff Horn by way of an upset 12-round unanimous decision. Back on July 1st, Horn, who retained his title for the first time in December with a stoppage over Gary Cochran, is now scheduled to face the mandatory challenger Terrence Crawford on April 14th at Madison Square Garden. Pacquiao is expected to be a part of the Crawford Horn Show, which is going to be carried by ESPN. The 39-year-old Pac-Man, who has a professional record of 59-7-2 and two with 38 KOs and captured world titles in a record eight division, has been rumored to fight Mike Alvarado in the upcoming bout. Alvarado is 38-4, 26 KOs. 37-year-old is a former WBO junior welterweight champion. Alvarado is now riding a four-fight winning streak after suffering three defeats in a row at the hand of Ruslan Provodnikov and Juan Manuel Marquez, who, uh, yeah, and Brandon Rios in their trilogy of fights. After losing to Rios in 2015, Alvarado took some time off. Uh, in 2016, he returned with a knockout of Sal Corral. You will never hear the name Sal Corral ever again in boxing. He fought twice in 2017 with stoppages over Matthew Strode, who you will never hear of again. And Sidney Sequeira, who you will never hear of again in boxing. I mean, it's, news, it's a name. Lane. I mean, it's a, it'll, it's a name for Manny to knock out. Breaking news. Break the news. Derek Carr has just won the Pro Bowl for the AFC. Okay. Yes. Thanks. I was recording it. I'm going to watch it after. And now you're going to confirm it. Yes. He's back, Lee. No, he's not. <laughs> Do you if care about Derek Mike Carr... Alvarado versus Manny Pacquiao? Ah, I hate it. Look at Manny. He's going to knock. He's going to knock Alvarado out. I want Pacquiao to go after Lucas Matisse. Great fight for both of them. Look at Freddie. Ka- he has to be smart on this decision. Lucas is a hurt fighter. Lucas Matisse is a top-ranked guy looking for but a paycheck. But it's obvious what they're setting up here, right? Horn's going to fight Crawford and unify the title. And if, Pacquiao, if I'm Bob Arum, you get you pay overpay Lucas Matisse and Golden Boy to get him in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao will make him quit. You hear me, Lee? Make him quit on the stool. And that fight versus Horn uh, Crawford winner just became big with Lucas Matisse calling out Manny Pacquiao last night. I'm all over it. If I'm De La Hoya, if I'm top rank, got to make that deal. That fight puts both of those fighters in a pay-per-view marquee match with the winner of Horn versus Crawford. Miguel Burchill will take on Carlo Magali. It's finalized for February 10th. After analyzing multiple options with intense negotiation for days, Zanfir and Max Boxing Promotions confirm the WBC super featherweight champion Miguel Burchill will face Carlo Magali. The title fight will take place February 10th in Cancun and be carried on uh, TV Azteca. I don't even, I can't even believe you actually made this a news story. Miguel Burchill. How are you still on Miguel Burchill's jock? Uh, He's 32, 1 and 28, Lee. He he did Dude, this is deep the... cut talking. This is like talking about the interior lineman for the Raiders. He, I mean, this is deep cut boxing. Francisco Vargas for the WBC title in an absolute <sighs> barn burner of a fight. Great fight. He's Lamanchenko's Orlando Salido all over again. Believe me, Miguel Bercho won't play around when they put him in the ring. If they ever put him in the ring, what Vasily Lamanchenko is still not proven to beat. A pressure fighter like Orlando Salido, and that's what Miguel Burchill is. He's just younger. He's stronger. He's powerful. Lee, I'm telling you, they don't want him. They do. You don't hear Lamanchenko say a fucking word about the WBC Miguel Burchill. Go ahead. Trevante Davis will take on Billy Dib. The purse bid is up. They're going to stick it on the uh, Adrian Broner, Omar Figueroa undercard. So you got a double header. For those of you who know little to nothing about Trevante Davis, he is Floyd Mayweather's A prospect. Javonta Davis is 19 and 0 with 18 knockouts. Recently, he took out Costa Rica's Francisco Fonseca, who was 21 and 1, 1 and 1 and 1. He was on the undercard of the Floyd Mayweather Connor. He was like the co-main, I thought, as I recall. 
Davis uh, emphasized Wednesday that he learned from the costly mistakes. He assured reporters that he can make 130 pounds in the foreseeable future. Uh, Davis, who also failed to make weight on his first attempt, uh, will eventually uh, met the 130-pound weight limit for a third time against Liam Walsh. I don't know. I think he's a little too big for 130 pounds. I mean, if he can make it. Uh, Australia's dib, most recent defeat. Def- that's not a good way to introduce your ne- the next guy you're fighting. Most recent. Oh, sorry. Most recently defeated. thought it was his most recent oh, okay. defeat. Recently <laughs> defeated Thailand's Plum Kum- Kumquat. I'm not, fault, the dude's name is Fun Kunmat. So let's just call him Plum Kumquat. Plum, he beat Plum Kumquat, who was 24, 24, and 2. Ooh. Yeah. No bueno. As in med school, they would say, no bueno. We don't want him. Ugh. <laughs> Jesus. Talk about protecting Javonta Davis. Yeah, you know what's sad about you saying you don't think he's a lightweight anymore is I don't think he's a super lightweight either, Lee. He's too small. He might have too much muscle on that kid, you know? I, I don't know how if they're if, – got to lean him up somehow, but I don't know if he's big enough to go up another division. <sighs> have you ever seen Javon? Yeah, you've yeah, seen I've him. Seen he's small, man. I've seen him live. Little, Stood right next to him. Yeah, he's all right. T-Rex. He's big. Andre Ward is hinting at a comeback, and what weight is Andre thinking about? Well, he's thinking about being a heavyweight. Straight out of a Rocky movie itself, uh, he weighed in last night at 199 pounds, all muscle. I promise I've been working, said Ward. Uh, he posted, we're working on something special. I'm not surprised by this. He vacated all three of the titles, for those of you who didn't uh, don't remember this. Uh, he vacated the WBO, IBF, and WBA after dismantling Kovalev in their back-to-back fights. Uh, prior to his retirement, Ward and his trainer, Virgil Hunter, had discussed the wild possibility of making a move to heavyweight to pursue a world title. Ward has always been very blunt that one of his biggest dreams is to accomplish uh, what Roy Jones Jr., one of his idols, had accomplished, jumping up to heavyweight. Uh, A few weeks ago, when we were working together in Carson at the Stub Hub with Super Flyweight Triple Header, uh, he was the expert commentator, um, and I was riding uh, back and forth with him from our hotel to the arena, and he was telling me about the fights that he would be interested in taking, specifically talking about Anthony Joshua. Who said this? None other than Jim Lampley said this. Okay. Are you you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Ward's biggest mistake is that he never brought me onto his team. Um, tried Lee, didn't want it. I wouldn't have went down this path with him. I I understand that he wants to take off the sport. Hopefully not. Hopefully he's doing it naturally. You know, there's going to be a lot of skeptics out there. I think if Ward does pull off the heavyweight run, why he took the time off to bulk up. Why didn't he just do it while, you know, continuing a, a boxing career? But that's a bridge we'll pass when we come to it. Um, I wouldn't have went down this path. Uh, Ward's not a household name. So stop hinting that you want to come back already, ding dong. They're going to fucking lowball you. You understand me? You got to tack like you're done with the sport. You got to proclaim you're the greatest light heavyweight of all time. Kovalev don't got nothing on you. Bivolev. Biv- Bivolv- don't got nothing on you. Jack Stevenson, they are, all of them don't. I'm the greatest, and I'm staying retired. And that's when you're going to get the highest uh, 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 purse that you can from these promoters. But if you're telling all these fucking promoters that you want to come back already, why would they give you a, a, a – why would they act like you're a demand? They know if they hold out, you're going to come back at the same price you left for. Hello? Don't like it, Lee. That video he put out, that was foolish of him. You know, it, it's just uh, Andre Ward is not a $20 million fighter. He's just not. I would have stood on, I'm retired, leave me alone. Then they will throw heavy money at you. Anthony Joshua to take on Joseph Parker. Over 70,000 tickets have been sold. Over 70,000 tickets have been sold. 
for the World Heavyweight Title Unification Clash between Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker.